This is recording, so I won't tell you a story. <laughs> Off camera, I will. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ramesh. Among other things, I teach neuroscience. We are interested in sensory processing, and what I mean by that is how the brain interprets the information that it receives. Although we tend to think of sensory processes as things that occur in the eye, the ear, the skin for touch, in fact, all those organs do is convert a physical stimulus light energy, sound energy, into a form that the body can understand. And the brain is then the one that interprets it so that it makes sense to tell us what it is we're seeing, what it is we're hearing, and so forth. Since that's the role of the brain, damage to the brain may not prevent you from receiving the information about the simple sounds, it prevents you from putting it together in a meaningful way. We look at the ability to process speech when there's noise in the background. And the very simple reason for that is that's most of our life, is noise from the television, for the cats, the dogs, other people talking. But it's also because when things are totally quiet, that's not much of a challenge for the brain, and the brain's able to cope with it. You know, if you think about your aged grandmother talking to her in a totally quiet room and she has no difficulty understanding what you say, at the moment the television's on in the background, that's when she's having difficulty hearing you. It's not that she has difficulty hearing you, it's that she has difficulty putting the sounds together to understand what is being said. So that's our underlying premise. In quiet conditions, the brain's able to work perfectly fine because there's not much of a demand on it. It's in the difficult conditions, when there's noise in the background and you're trying to listen to one person as opposed to all of that noise in the background, that's when the brain is being challenged to put all its resources together. And so if brain function is compromised, that's where you're going to see deficits. People with early stages of MS show no deficits when the background noise is a hissing sound. When the background noise is people talking, more challenging condition, they show a small deficit, it's significant, but its real life impact is not going to be huge. If you look at the disease condition when it's progressed further, even the words in context, they show massive deficits. So then, even familiar sentences become difficult if there's competing noise, you see? We believe that the deficits in processing of sensory information, that is hearing, vision, touch and so forth, are very early markers of a disease. So yes, we would like to be able to use this as a very early diagnostic. We would like to use it to follow the progression of the disease. And the final thing, we would like to use it to monitor the benefits of any therapy. I, I, no, 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 I feel so sorry for the two of you having to listen to this sort of drivel <laughs> over and over and maintain your enthusiasm. Well done. <laughs>